Folks, Bidenomics is just another way of saying the American dream. Bidenomics was supposed to be Mr. Biden's path to a second term. How are you, pal? But based on the evidence, Joe Biden's economic policies simply aren't selling politically. The latest dark cloud is the New York Times-Siena College poll that has Mr. Biden trailing permanent defendant Donald Trump in five battleground states. Three years ago, if you had been aiming for uh, retirement savings of, let's say, $500,000, in today's climate with higher prices, you need more like $600,000. In three years, you need another hundred grand to, to, base, to have the same purchasing power. So inflation has very much eaten away at people's savings. Conventional wisdom blames inflation's lingering effects, high interest rates, and Biden's age. What most analysis ignores is the president's economic policies. The question is, how solid a candidate is Joe Biden? We know he's not a solid candidate. Exactly. He is struggling. I mean, within his own hard, party. It is hard to watch. The comedian Rodney Dangerfield perfected a character who complained. I don't get no respect. I mean, that's the story of my life. No respect. Maybe the short version of Mr. Biden's troubles is that he is Rodney Dangerfield, a presidential schlump who will never get respect. If you're ever working with me and I hear you treat another colleague with disrespect, I promise you I will fire you on the spot. The point is, if this democratic narrative is allowed to take hold, that Mr. Biden's political problems with the general public are personal, his economic policies, or Bidenomics, will be fenced off from responsibility. I think the compromise that uh, they came up with, if implemented, will make Biden the most progressive president since FDR. The Biden democratic spending, supported at times by Republicans, has been massive. More importantly, it conformed to the standard party model of sending transfer payments to individuals and subsidies to businesses. And most of those subsidies are for climate initiatives. The numbers are mind-boggling. Beyond the direct COVID payments to individuals and expanded unemployment benefits, the administration has poured money into infrastructure, veterans' benefits, child care, Obamacare expansions, semiconductor production, and some $400 billion on climate projects. Oh, and $127 billion in student debt cancellation. Bidenomics is about building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. Other than Sam Bankman-Fried's FTX I can't think of much of anything, including free market economic theory that builds from the top down. We're supporting targeted investments. During the Obama years, Democrats aggressively substituted the word investments for public spending. Smart investments in America. The problem for Mr. Biden is that increasingly, I don't think most people believe that public spending is somehow an investment in them personally. Making targeted investments promote domestic production of semiconductors, batteries, electric cars, clean energy. Most Americans work in the real economy, which is to say the private sector of measurable profit and loss for employers and themselves. They live in the economic world as it exists now, not in some pie-in-the-sky promise progressives say they will deliver in 20 years. The job market is still fairly strong out there. There are jobs out there. I'm not crying Armageddon here. But I do think that those rising interest rates are really starting to bite right now. Biden's multi-billion dollar climate projects send a message to much of the currently employed labor force. You are vulnerable. We need the jobs in manufacturing and construction and housing in, in you know, business services. Inflation may be a big factor, but we need to consider whether the political failure of Bidenomics marks a historical turning point. The outlays were unprecedented. We can't tell people the economy is good or things are getting better if they don't feel it. It looks like people may no longer be moved by the traditional democratic strategy of transfers and targeting. In the real economy today, people want more say-so and where their own money goes.